All right, today we are going to be writing a Python application to build a, a simple calculator in Python. And this is going to be really easy. So it will be step by step. So if you want to follow along, I'll give you a few seconds to get your system ready. I'm using PyCharm, but you can also use um, another IDE. Let's, uh, for instance, you can use Anaconda uh, along with uh, a Jupyter Notebook, but I think PyCharm is, is a better option to use. So let's get started. So this is a blank uh, a blank file, a blank Python file, calculator.py. So I also remind you subscribe to my channel so that you get notified when I make presentations and also you encourage me to keep making these lessons for you. So I can actually delete all this. I start with completely blank, blank file so that you can follow along. So I've not really done anything, but let's just leave it. So the first thing you want to do is to display a menu for the user to choose from. So let's write uh, a, a, a function, not a function. Let's just display a menu for the user. For instance, we can just say print. Um, you can say select an operation to perform All right so <clears throat> after printing this we can then print because we want him to select one for add two for subtract three for multiply and four for divide so let's say one for add and let's just uh, copy and paste and then we can change everything. So this is a simple calculator, but one thing about it is it's the same principle that is going to be used to build a more complex one. So let's start with this one. And in subsequent lessons, we develop something more complex and gradually we build something that we may distribute online uh, that people could actually use to solve problems. So multiply and the last one is divide. So normally in writing programs it's good to test it from time to time. So uh, so I'm going to go ahead to run it so that we test it to see that it's working. So you can see the output. It says select an operation to perform add, subtract, multiply and divide. All right, so let's continue. The next thing is to is to capture what the user uh, enters. If he enters one, then it means that is add. So let's say operation equals input because input you are using it to get whatever the user enters. So at this point, we have operation. Uh, have been taken. So operation uh, has to be, I okay, let me change this. It should be one, two, three, and four. Three and four. So if operation is one, then we are going to do subtract. If operation is two, we are going to do uh, multiply, uh, subtract. For one is add, two subtract, three multiply, and four divide. So the next thing we are going to do is to check what operation is. So let's say if operation is equal to um, one. So at this point, we want to check if operation is one. If operation is one, then we are going to code for add. And the same thing else, elif operation then we are going to write the code for subtract so you can see it's really very uh, natural to to write uh, uh, the complex functions uh, just that you just need to understand how it works if operation is equal to three we are going to write the code for division L elif operation is equal to four. We are going to write the code for what? For multiply, right? 
and then else else uh, operation can now be anything maybe five maybe six maybe uh, whatever it is uh, we can just tell the user print we can just print say invalid entry all right so that is basically the first type of the program so now we are going to write the code for add subtract multiply and divide so as usual we are going to test it to make sure everything is working fine you can see some red lines here so let me just shift these out says indent expected indent expected okay so we are going to get rid of this but i think you understand what is happening when when the a line starts with I suppose, a line starts with a hash key then that line is a comment i'm sure you know about that so eventually we'll get rid of all these comments um let's run it to see how it works so it says elif operation is equal to two code for add so what is happening here is it's not seeing any code so it's giving an error so let's write out all these codes so what we are going to do when the operation is one it means that the user wants to add two numbers so we can just tell him enter number one and number two number one is equal to Impute enter first number. So he enters first number, and we also take num two equal to impute enter second number. So immediately he enters the second number. We are going to print the output to the screen. So I'm going to print out the, the summation of these two numbers. I'm going to say print num1 plus num2. But we can just add a little test saying maybe the sum is so, so, and so. So let's say the sum of um, the sum of this. Okay, let's say the sum is and then we specify plus so um, then I'm going to say num1 plus num2 all right so um, this is what uh, the code for the add operation so let's just copy it across instead of having to write it all over again so so this one should be num1 minus num2. In this case, it will be it will be sorry, I'm going to indent this. Okay, so so for the for the operation number three, operation number three is multi is is multiply. So I'm going to say num1 multiply by num2. And the fourth operation is division. So I'm going to say num1 divided by num2 in this way. So I'm going to just put a division sign. So it may look very easy, but that is basically how it works. So I'm going to run it. And let's see uh, how it works so that if we have some errors, uh, we can solve it. So, let's see white space not necessary. So, let me take out white spaces. It's not uh, much of an error, but that's just a warning. So, I'm going to run it and let's see how it works. So, it tells us uh, select an operation to perform. So, I'm going to choose add, which is fun. It, it says invalid entry. <laughs> That's very funny. So let's see why it's telling us invalid entry, even though we entered uh, one. The reason it's telling us invalid entry is because um, 
what was coming from the inputs is actually a string. So we are going to say if operation is equal to, I'm going to enclose this. So let's try it before we copy it across. So I'm going to enter one. So it says enter first number, I'm going to enter, uh, let's say four. Enter second number, five. It says the sum is 45. So, which is not actually correct. So we are going to solve this right now. So to solve this, we are going to first take these two numbers to be integers. So let's say int int num1 and then int num2. So actually com I'm converting this the two numbers to so integers and then doing the, uh, the the addition. So let's run it and see if it works. So I'm going to select one for add and I'm going to enter five. And the second number seven and it tells us um, must be string. All right. So so now these two numbers they have been converted to integers and now I'm going to convert it back to a string for it to be displayed there so to do that just put the two in braces and then use str right good so I'm going to run again let's see how far we've come so if I say run enter first number five enter second number seven and it gives us the sum is 12. Fine. So at least we got the first part. So let's simply copy these across to all the other places. I'm going to take this, copy it across, and then I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to paste it here. Now I'm going to change this to minus, and I'm going to paste this here. And I'm going to change it to multiplication, and I'm going to paste this here. And I'm changing it to division. All right, so let's go ahead to run it to see what is happening here. So now I'm going to try the multiply. So I'm choosing three invalid n three. So okay. So I'm sure by now you should know where it's coming from. So we are going to enclose these in quotes. All of them we are enclosing in quotes. So the same thing goes here, and close it in quotes, and then hopefully if everything is fine, our calculator is going to be working. So number three, enter first number four, enter second number six, the sum is 24, four times six. Let's go again, so let's try for subtract, enter first number 50, enter, oh, 50 is invalid entry, and that is, so. Uh, Okay, 50 is invalid entry because we want it uh, to select 1 to 4, so it's, it's actually working. So let's go for subtract, so we go for 2, enter first number, let's say 23, and I'm subtracting 3, and it says, <laughs> it says the sum, so we, we can just correct it. So let's go ahead to change the, the, for, the for subtraction, we can say the, the 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 this, the difference yeah the difference is and for for multiplication the product and for division the the result is so let's now run it to see where we are now I'm going to test for divide so four I'm going to enter fifty and I'm going to enter 10, and it says the result is 5.0. So uh, the same way you can all, always do every other one. So let's try for subtract two. I'm going to say a uh, 12, second number six, uh, the difference is six. So we've actually built a simple calculator in Python. So now we are going to extend this calculator, but that will be in the second lesson where we are going to add operations like square root, 
squared and maybe um, um, square root squared cube power and uh, 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 inverse does I think what was it called when you invert a number like 1 over x is called um, you can remember exactly but it's called uh, inversion no, not inversion so okay I can't remember for now so we are going to actually extend this calculator to be able to handle other operations for now I'd like to thank you for viewing try to make sure you do this yourself and make sure you understand how it works I will see you in the next lesson